welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Voice of Christmas. Welcome to the Voice of Christmas. I'm your host, Roy Owens, and with me is the beautiful Mandy Lee. Thanks, Roy. We're thrilled to be with you today as we seek to find that unique star, that one-of-a-kind sound, the angelic voice, the one who will crown the Voice of Christmas. And it looks like our first one's ready to go. So let's get this competition kicked off with our first contestant singing The Bells. It's that time of year. Christmas bells are ringing. Do you hear what I hear? Keeping time loud and clear for everyone to hear. Bells could be angel wings. Keeping time while they're the light that is there to guide us. Jesus has come. Wow, what a way to start our competition. I have to agree. The bar has definitely been set very high. That's going to be a tough act to follow. Oh, most definitely. Mandy, while we're waiting for our next contestant to come out, let me ask you a question. What is your favorite Christmas song? Oh, I don't know. I guess I haven't really thought about it. I guess if I have to choose just one, have to be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, gotta admit, didn't see that one coming. Hey, when you have small kids, it's always in your Christmas playlist. Uh, hey, would you look at that? Our next contestant's coming on the stage now, and here she is singing, He Shall Be Called. He's a wonderful. Contestant, if these first two competitors are any indication of what's to come, we're in for quite the competition. Now, I'll tell you what, folks, I don't know whose idea it was to hire the live orchestra, but that person deserves a raise. Folks, what about this orchestra? I have no idea what to expect, because all I know is the title of their song. All right, give. It's called The Ugly Christmas Sweater Song. Everybody needs a Christmas sweater And ugly Christmas sweaters are the best They're festive and they're neat And no outfit is complete Without some Merry Christmas on your chest My dad had one with Santa dressed like Elvis with cotton balls and sleeves made out of velvet. Thank you, thank you very much. And I saw one with kittens that were dressed like little elves. And I had one that used to play the tune to Silver Bells. Everybody needs a Christmas sweater. And ugly Christmas sweaters are the best. They're festive and they're neat And no outfit is complete 
without some Merry Christmas on your chest. Oh, ugly Christmas sweaters are the best. Was, uh, that was something. Welcome back to the Voice of Christmas. We're continuing our competition as we seek to find that unique voice, that star sound, the one we will crown the Voice of Christmas. Now, each of our competitors is following his or her dream, a desire for something special. This Christmas, someone is going to have their life changed forever. The Christmas season brings with it a lot of expectations and stresses. What side of the family are we going to spend Christmas with? Who gets Christmas morning? Where are we going for Christmas dinner? Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. This next group has got a message I think we can all get behind. Now, it's a little elusive this time of year, but we invite you this Christmas to experience joy. Something that seems to be in short supply these days. It can be really hard to find with so much going on in the world. Every time you turn on the TV, there's another natural disaster, or in some cases, an unnatural disaster. That, in talk of war, or at least rumors of war. I don't know about everybody else, but I could definitely use something to be happy about. You know, Mandy, my mother used to say, Roy, look for reasons to be joyful. I gotta admit, it's a lot easier said than done. Mm. Uh, but I'll tell you something as a kid that always brought me joy. I remember sitting on the rug in front of the TV watching Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and they would sometimes showcase Doc Severinsen and the Tonight Show Band. Now that was a great jazz orchestra. Get those fingers and toes ready for some tapping because here they are bringing us our next song.
Wow, that was amazing. If Doc Severinsen's band is anything like that, I might have to see if they have any of their shows streaming on Netflix. This next group, this next group is something very special. I got a chance to hear them during rehearsal. And I tell you what, folks, you're in for a treat. <laughs> experienced. I've heard Little Drummer Boy countless times, but I've never heard it quite like that. Adding Psalm 150 to it really changed the meaning of that song for me. I couldn't agree more. You know, I've always wondered how Little Drummer Boy fits within the context of Christmas, and yet now it seems so obvious. It doesn't matter who you are or, or what you do in life or what skills you possess. But whatever you can do, you do to the glory of God. We'll be right back. We're in the home stretch of our competition to find that unique star. Now, this next contestant is one of the sweetest young ladies you'll ever meet, Mandy. And she has the voice of an angel. Hearing her sing during the rehearsals reminded me when I was a kid growing up at Christmas. Shining brightly as the choir of angels sing, singing praise. Now, in the highest, at the birth of Christ the King, you saw the lights, the shining. All the lights are shining brightly 
at the glory of your name. Mandy, I just cannot shake the feeling that we're going about this contest all wrong. I'm starting to feel the same way. Our goal has been to find that unique star, that special voice. But all our songs seem to be pointing us in a different direction. The sounds of Christmas from my childhood are all around us. And yet something, something is missing. You know, Mima used to say that Christmas begins at the manger. In, at church on Christmas Eve with Mima, we used to light candles and sing songs to Jesus. And I remember the preacher saying that everything changed the moment baby Jesus uttered his first cry. Maybe we've been listening for the wrong voice this Christmas. Howdy Central, aren't you blessed and glad that you came today to receive that blessing? And you know, months ago, John told me he was doing something called the Voice of Christmas. I don't know if you guys realize or not, but John wrote this program. This is not something he bought, he did this. So I started thinking about the Voice of Christmas, and I don't know how many of you guys watched the show The Voice. But if you think about it, why do we like shows like The Voice and American Idol? It's not just because we're music fans, but I think what we like about them the most is the surprises that we get, especially when there's a real disconnect and we're not getting what we expect. Like they profile some guy that's a biker, you know, he rides a Harley, he's got a big beard, great big dude wearing a leather vest, and he opens his mouth and he's got this soft, lovely tenor voice. That's the kind of stuff we like to see, or, or when we get some petite little young uh, 18-year-old girl up there who's quiet and shy, and she opens her mouth, and it's just this belting, huge, angelic thing that comes out of her mouth. I think that's what we like, and, and the neat thing is the voice of Christmas gives us that disconnect. That's, that's something just unique and special about what the real voice of Christmas is. The Jewish people had been waiting for centuries for their Savior to come, for the Messiah to come to them. And they were expecting a certain kind of voice. They were expecting the sound of a trumpet. They were expecting a, a battle cry. They were expecting to hear the sound of troops marching into battle and the sound of, of cheers as captives have been set free. But what's the sound they get when the Savior comes? They get braying and mooing and clucking and the sounds of a woman in labor and the sound of a baby's cry piercing the night. I know, I know, the little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. 
Um, I, I hope this doesn't make anybody mad, but he was a baby. He came in the flesh. He cried. I actually made a guy mad by saying that one time. And get this. Here's what he said to me. Babies wrapped in swaddling clothes never cry. <laughs> How many of you have ever swaddled your baby? Anybody in here? You sw- and the baby never cried, right? <laughs> yeah, those little burrito things we do are great, but uh, they ain't that great. But then there's a disconnect from even those sounds as Thousands and thousands and thousands of angels appeared announcing the birth of this baby. But here's here's another even disconnect from that is they didn't show up in a palace. And they didn't show up in the temple. And they didn't show up in a prominent place. They showed up at night out in the field to the least likely of all the people in that time, a bunch of shepherds, smelly, smelly shepherds hanging out with sheep. They announced the royal birth, and the interesting thing is we have no idea what Joseph said that night, do we? We have no idea what Mary said that night, do we? But we know what those angels said. And I want us to take just a couple of minutes and consider what it was these angels said in Luke chapter 2. Beginning in verse 8, we read, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. I'll bet they were. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. I have to tell you, I want to know what that sounded like. I would really like to hear what they heard. Uh, we don't know what they heard, but, but we read in the book of Revelation when John got to see this vision of the thousands and thousands of angels praising God in heaven. He said their voice sounded like many waters. And he said that their voice sounded like peals of thunder. But what this sounded like to those shepherds that night really isn't important. How do we know it's not important? Because it's not described at all. How they sounded is not what's important, but what they said is what's really important. We get so wrapped up in, and I think, the, 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 the melodies and the tunes of our songs and of our messages and our presentations when what's really important is the content. Content, substance is what matters. These angels had a short song. I know, I know some of you are saying, no, Mike, it says here that they said, not that they sang. They were saying, not singing. I get all that, but you guys, this was a song. I don't know how it was spoken or chanted or sung, but it is written poetically. It is a song. And there are two themes in this song, the themes of glory and peace. Glory and peace. I want you to consider those two things that that the angels sang about. They were singing about glory and peace. Glory to God in the highest. What in the world does that mean? It means that the fame, the beauty, the majesty of God were now being seen more highly, more fully than ever before in the highest in the birth of this baby. In the coming of Jesus. We have such a tiny perspective of glory. Where do we ascribe glory today? We ascribe glory to celebrities and to politicians and to CEOs and to royalty. I I still haven't found anybody who can tell me why I need to know about some royal guy getting married. 
but apparently I do because the most painful thing at the gym the other day was 30 minutes of coverage on the TV of the royal engagement. I was so glad to get out of the gym. Think about who we give glory to. We give glory to celebrities. We see celebrities as glorious. Have you looked very closely at our celebrities lately? How glorious are these lives? Think of the divorces and the wreckage of these families with drugs and alcohol. I shared recently, I love the, the old band Boston from the 80s. You know, the lead singer of Boston committed suicide. His name's Brad Delp, and he left a suicide note. Here's this celebrity living in all this glory. You know what his note said? One thing. Brad Delp is a lonely soul. David Cassidy died recently. Now, I said that name to somebody young the other day who said, who is that? Now, those of you my age and older know that David Cassidy in the 70s was the teen heartthrob. I mean, he was the throb of all the heartthrobs. I mean, he was the big dog. His daughter said that when he died, do you know what his last words were? So much wasted time. Doesn't seem that glorious, does it? How about our, our politicians? How glorious are they? Well, right now, not very. We're talking about a bunch of people can't even fix health care, right? CEOs. Money talks, and it's glorious. Man, they fly around on jets. They have houses all over the world. How much of that do you think they leave behind when they go? All of it. And the royalty. I don't get royalty. I'm an American, so I don't get it. But I see royalty. They play the part really well. Do you know that Queen Elizabeth II has a particular title? I don't know if you know about this title. Her title is Supreme Governor of the Church of England. She is the Supreme Governor of the Church of England. I don't know how many of you know Steve Camp, the, the Christian musician, um, he's, he's really um, outspoken, probably way too outspoken on a lot of things. But he got to meet the queen one time, and he was just with a bunch of people. And he thought, you know, I'm just going to meet the queen. She's going to say hi, and we're going to move on. But she decided to stop him. She wanted to say something. She says, I understand you're a minister. He says, I am. She says, do you know that I am the, what is it again? Supreme governor of the Church of England. He said, that's interesting. My Bible says that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. How do you reconcile those? Amen. He didn't get invited back <laughs> to see the queen. All of the people, all of the positions, all of the things that we ascribe glory to aren't real glory. Tell me which celebrity, which politician, which king or queen or prince did the angels descend from heaven and sing? None of them. You want to see glory? We just finished going through the book of Ecclesiastes. What did we learn in Ecclesiastes? You want to see something? You, you don't find it under the sun. You have to look beyond the sun. You have to look beyond the sun because that is where true glory is. And true glory split into our world, split from the spiritual to the, the physical and came into our world. And he came as a little baby in the middle of the night out where the animals are kept. That is God's idea of glory. The other theme in this little short song is peace. On earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Peace, really? How much peace did Jesus bring? Is there any peace on earth? But look closely. It says peace on earth, right? On earth, peace among certain people. This peace isn't for everybody. It's only those with whom God is pleased. This is the key. Jesus didn't come to bring world peace. He never said I was coming to bring world peace. In fact, do you know what he said? He said, don't think I came to bring peace. I came to bring not peace, but a sword because people are going to kill you if you follow me. He didn't come to bring peace between people. He came to bring something way more important than world peace or peace between people, and that's real peace. 
There's so much anger in the world, isn't there? Why? People don't have any peace. There's so much dissatisfaction in the world. I did something I can't explain. I, I really, I can't, I've, I, I've processed this for years, and I don't know why I did it. But Terry told me years ago, we were living in Birmingham, and she said, now I'm going to get up early on Black Friday and go to the gallery. And I don't know why I did it, I don't know why, but I said, I'll go with you. <laughs> what was I thinking? I guess I thought I was being a good hubby. And we got up at, I don't know, oh, dark 30. I got my coffee. We went to the mall. I kid you not, this is what happened. I'm doing all right. We walked in the mall. We walked in the door, and I went. I was immobilized. I was terrified by what I was seeing. Terry literally had to reach over. She's rubbing my arm going, it'll be okay. Just breathe. You're going to be okay. It was the craziest. These people are crazy. And here's the crazy. Well, Black Friday starts on Thursday now, right? Here's what we do. What do we do? We get together with all our family. We sit down to eat and we say, yeah, we're so thankful for everything we have. And then we go get in fist fights to get stuff we don't have. <laughs> what is going on? There's no peace. Go to the mall. Don't go to the mall. <laughs> This is not a peaceful time of year, is it? It's just not. It's crazy and it's so stressful. Why? It's not a peaceful time of year because people don't have peace. And why not? I want you to think about this. How do you feel when a relationship is strained or broken? Some of you have broken family relationships right now. There are probably some in this room. You haven't spoken maybe to your parents or to your siblings or, or to your kids. There are these broken relationships or maybe these strained relationships. And doesn't, that's just upsetting, isn't it? Or even if you know a coworker is upset with you or if you know that a friend has issues with you, you lose sleep over that, don't you? I mean, it hurts your stomach and you, you're just out of sorts. There's no peace in broken relationships. Well, our fundamental problem is that the relationship, the most important relationship, that relationship between God and people is broken. And in fact, it's so broken that God describes it as a relationship of hostility. We are hostile towards him and he is hostile toward us. <clears throat> I know that's not a popular message today. Much of the Bible is not popular today. We like to think everybody's okay with God. I hear people say, I've never been an enemy of God. God describes us as his enemies and says that we are all, by our very nature, objects of wrath because we have sinned against him. He didn't break the relationship, we did. And as long as we're not right with God, we can't have peace. So here's where the glory and the peace come together. Here's what makes this song make sense. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those, those with whom he is pleased. Here's how those come together. The glory of God is made most clear in the sending of Jesus to fix our relationship with God. His glory is so magnified that he took the initiative even though he did nothing wrong. I can't help when I think of this, but, but think of Hosea. Hosea that God told to take an immoral wife. Take this immoral woman to be your wife. And what do they do? They have children together. And then what does she do? She goes and sells herself to another man. And God uses Hosea to demonstrate the way he loves us. By telling Hosea, I know you've been betrayed. Your wife is an adulteress. Your wife is a harlot. And she has sold herself into the possession of another man to help make money for him. Now you take your money and you go buy her back. And that's what God has done for us. He's bought us back. We're the guilty ones. We have made ourselves enemies of God. And he sent his own son not to be a military hero but to be a reconciler. To reconcile us to God. He took the penalty of our sins. Jesus took the penalty of our sins on himself to satisfy God's justice. Listen to what Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says. While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. And when we can just realize that. 
that all that inner turmoil that we have, all that something's missing, all that something's not right, all that I just want to be happy and I can't find happiness and I need to do this and I need to do that and I, I need to figure out the right kind of life to make myself happy and to find the satisfaction that I'm longing for that I can't find in, in substances and in people and possessions and status and education and career. All these things I'm chasing after are because I have a broken relationship and when we realize that Jesus did everything necessary to reconcile us to God, we realize that, we repent of our sins, we turn from our sin, and we embrace Jesus by faith. I didn't say when we decide to get religious. I didn't say when we decide to get good. I said when we decide to embrace Jesus by faith, we're made right with God. So that, as Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when you are no longer condemned by God, there's peace. When we're at peace with God, we can be at peace completely because his favor, his favor rests on us. With us, he is pleased. Do you think you need that kind of peace? Is there somebody in this room who's longing for that kind of peace? You can have it. It's available to you. If you really want it, and if you're willing to do what it takes to get it, what does it take to get it? It means you turn from your sins and you fall headlong into Jesus. I pray that you would hear the voice of Christmas. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among whom? Those with whom he's pleased. We'll be lighting a candle. Every Sunday this month. This is an Advent wreath. Wasn't that some Advent wreath? Each candle represents something different. And today is the peace candle. And we want that here for the remainder of the day. For you to be thinking, peace is available to me. It's available to you if you want it. In just a moment, we're going to be richly blessed by the choir and the instrumentalists again. And when that is over, if you want to talk about how you can have peace, I'm going to be right out these doors. We'll have other staff members out these doors. We would love to talk to you. Just come see us. Say, Mike, I want that peace you're talking about. And we'll help you find it. Oh,